A successful advising relationship, like any relationship, has to be built on mutual respect and trust. As the student, it's your job to come prepared with questions and ideas for the advisor to respond to, because they can't read your mind. You have to bring those things to the table. And the advisor's job is to understand what happens at Princeton, how the system works, and what courses and concentrations and resources are suitable and might work best for you. So you have to be honest, you have to be prepared, and you have to be willing to take risks in saying that, I don't know, can we think about this? Can we discuss this? Can I try this out? Can you tell me more? And that's the basis for a good advising relationship. I think the, the most important thing, if you want to get the most out of it, is to actually rely on your advisor. Advisors have been around for a long time. They've seen a lot of students do a lot of different things and be involved in a lot of different situations. And they really can be very helpful in a lot of different ways. Uh, so if you view them as someone who can mentor you and who can help you, uh, even if maybe you've gone into a major that's not quite the same discipline as your advisor, it can still help because they, the problems that students seem to encounter and the challenges are, are usually sort of uh, the same across the different disciplines. Um, just to try and keep in touch, the semester gets very busy for myself when I'm teaching and for the students when they're taking their courses. And so, and the semester also goes pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, an email that lets me know how things are going or if you're having trouble in a certain course, um, I can follow up with it and um, you can always schedule appointments with me and stop in and chat even if you're not having trouble with the course just to let me know how things are going. Communication is great. Remember that it is not only those scheduled meetings but that you can contact your advisor with questions at any point during the semester. What happens for advisors is that we have 10 to 12 students that are freshmen and then another dozen that are sophomores. So the registration period is a very hectic time for your advisor and for you. If you have questions about programs of study or kinds of courses and all that, if you can catch us in the middle of the semester before all of this starts, or in fact after the first registration period but before the next drop ad period, those are really good times to have more substantial conversations about exploring what your options are. Um, I think that it is helpful to develop an honest relationship is uh, a good idea to, uh, for the student to email me or uh, to reach out to me whenever they encounter an issue. Uh, I suggest that they do it early on. For example, if they're having difficulty in one of their courses or if they feel that um, the course is not what they expected it to be, uh, I, I suggest that they reach out to me um, and we can figure out um, a different course, course of action. Um, you know, I, you know, I really like it when students invite me for coffee or lunch. I like to just follow up and see how they're doing generally. Uh, well, tips for a successful advising relationship, that perhaps there are many, but let me just focus on a couple. It may be going too far to say that advising is a continuous process, uh, but I, it's certainly uh, fair to say that advising should not mean just uh, seeing your advisor at the beginning of the year for your fall term courses and then uh, at, towards the end of the uh, first semester for your spring term courses. A successful advising relationship means you know, seeing your advisor uh, f for not just academic issues, but issues beyond academics. Uh, I advise my students on, for example, summer internships. Uh, I've talked with my students about uh, you know, life after Princeton. So uh, students should reach out uh, and meet their faculty advisors other than just uh, for course selection. Uh, I make sure that I always have some time available in my web uh, appointment scheduler and students are welcome to sign up for a meeting anytime during the year. Almost all students when they come to Princeton struggle with having to pick courses and concentrations. It's only natural. The course offerings are very large and it's hard to figure out what's the right choice for you. And the first thing is that there is no wrong choice. Right? There are many paths that you can take through your Princeton experience and we will help you figure out what is the best path for you, but there's no wrong path. The second thing is that to help you through this process, 
of picking courses and a concentration, you need to think about whether you're open to learning new things. Because one of the problems that students always have is that they like to stay with what they already know because it's familiar, it's comfortable, and you know what you're doing. But we have so many professors and so many programs that can challenge you in unexpected ways and you have to be willing to take the risks to open yourself up to new ideas and new experiences and be willing to change your mind and say, I thought I was going to be majoring in economics, but now I'm interested in anthropology. I was going to major in physics, but now I'm interested in engineering. There are so many things that can happen at Princeton and you have to be willing to be open. So between being adventuresome and being willing to be open to learning, I think these are two of the biggest things that you can prepare yourself for. I think the biggest challenge, particularly among freshmen, is time management. Um, college is very different than high school. Uh, certainly for most students. And this comes in sort of two flavors. The first one is that courses are just very different than the way high school courses traditionally are. So um, there's typically more work, more longer assignments, but at the same time you don't have class every day now. You maybe have class once or twice a week. You have fewer assignments, but they're much larger in scope, and so you have to be good and on top of getting uh, sort of the work out of the way. Another feature of the classes uh, in any college, but particularly at Princeton, is that they're really hard. And there's a lot of really smart people here, and you're not going to be able to master everything the way that you probably mastered things in high school. Um, it's just not really possible at the college level. And so your goal is to get the most out uh, of every course and the best experience you can have. And so there's a level of comfort uh, that comes with that that I think a lot of freshmen struggle with in the beginning. Um, the second issue with time management is that outside of class there's a lot of amazing stuff to do at Princeton. A ton of social things and a ton of extracurricular activities. Uh, and you shouldn't ignore them at the, uh, you know, just to do academics, but you have to find a good balance. And this is something that's hard and you have to figure out how to do. Um, I think w one of the things that students struggle with at Princeton is uh, our kind of short semester. It, the whole semester happens in 12 weeks, and so they really have to keep on top of things. It's not like um, in high school where you have a week or two that you can catch up. So um, time management is something that I really try and stress. I know that students are excited to be here and get involved in lots of different extracurricular activities. So just trying to um, keep their uh, time management skills uh, well organized can help them a lot. Everybody that comes to Princeton was really, really good at high school and succeeded in a wide variety of areas. And what often happens is that when you get to Princeton, you find to your horror that you're maybe not the best person in any given class. It's a really difficult moment, and it's a really important one for your education to understand that you're not going to nail every class. And in fact, now that you're in college, nailing every class is really not what I think your goal should be. I think your goal should be exploring, satisfying your curiosity, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, and understanding that your GPA is the least important thing that you will bring out of this university. I think that uh, students struggle with having unstructured time, especially at the beginning of their first semester. So um, I think it's a good idea to set up a routine that uh, works for them. Uh, I would say that it's a good idea not to try to do all of the reading assignments at once in one sitting. So for example, if they have a se freshman seminar or some kind of a seminar that uh, meets once a week and um, the assignment is 100 to 150 pages of reading a week, I, I suggest that they try to split that in two, in three maybe uh, different days so that they can digest all of the information in a, in a more meaningful way. Um, I also uh, suggest that maybe, uh, if possible, students wait uh, for the first few weeks before they make commitments to uh, having extra non-academic activities um, so that they can get a sense of how long it takes for them to get through the assignments. I think the biggest challenge is that there is a, the academic requirements, the extracurricular activities, you know, time, they're only 24 hours in the day and the students are struggling with how to juggle the 
the, the, the course load, the, the academic uh, 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 responsibilities uh, together with the, the, uh, the extracurricular activities. So I think uh, uh, being very careful in, uh, in judicious use of time is certainly uh, one of the top, uh, top uh, struggles.